Hey friends, it is Trekker A. Just grabbing something from Walmart. I did some shopping yesterday, but I forgot my international delight for my coffee. My Keurig coffee. I just put a little bit of that in there for the flavor. And also for the uh, for the sugar content, because there's a lot of sugar in it, but you don't need a whole lot, so that's a good thing. Yeah, we're in Langley, and uh, uh, Christmas is finally over, and the rush, and the craziness. And uh, I just got news from work that probably will be heading out today with a load. And I was given instructions to go check out trailer 5331 to go see if it needs a washout but that's probably the trailer I'm going to be taking I don't know where I'm loading out of yet <coughs> might be heading down to Yakima probably are because there's bad weather on Snoqualmie Pass again <laughs> you can always tell where you're ending up because um, if I'm taking an empty down chances are that's the direction I'll be heading uh, down into the Yakima area so chances are we're gonna run into some really lousy weather uh, but I don't know when I'm leaving yet so can't really say but we do have auto socks for the truck because I really don't want to be messing around with chains if I have to the roads may be good I don't know the winter wise uh, winter the winter weather advisory um, I don't know how long it's been going for but it's it's in effect until tomorrow afternoon at 4 o'clock so um, I don't know how much they're expecting there sometimes the roads can be good sometimes they can be bad or wet or whatnot I, I don't know we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there so if you're new to my channel welcome my name is trucker Ray and I share my experiences driving the highways of North America and now into Mexico and I love to share the gospel of Yeshua. That's right, we're a Christian truck driver who uh, keeps things very clean on our videos. So if you're watching with children, don't, uh, don't worry about it. You're not gonna hear or see anything inappropriate on this channel. So your children are safe here. And um, yeah, and you'll hear me share about my faith because I'm not afraid to share about that. And uh, because I'll tell you something, especially in the days that we're living right now, we need God. We really do. We need Yahweh. We need Yeshua. And for those, those of you that don't know those words, if you knew, Yahweh is God the Father. Yeshua is God the Son. The Rechadash, the Holy Spirit, is God the Holy Spirit. That's right. Three amazing people manifest into one God. I'll explain that to you another time if you don't understand that. But that's our statement of faith in a nutshell. And uh, yeah, if you guys have been here before, welcome back. Welcome to 2023. Well, it's not 2023 yet, but by the time you get this video, it will be. And uh, yeah, we're going to head over to the yard and see what is going on with this trailer that I'm picking up. I'm pretty sure it's fine, but I was just told it might need a bit of a wash. So that's what I'm going to go check out when I get there. Check the reefer, make sure everything works on it. That's kind of ideally what you want to do. Just don't pick up a trailer and assume everything's good and you're on your way and then you get to where you're going and you realize that uh, the reefer is not working. Now you got a problem. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a pleasure to have you guys all back, especially those of you that have been watching us for a while, maybe even 10 years. I know some of you have, and uh, I'm hoping that 2023 is going to be an amazing year for, for videos and for uh, ministry with this uh, with this wonderful ministry God has given me. And um, yeah, I wanna really try to do everything I can to please my Lord and what I'm doing. Yeah, amen. So why don't we open up with a quick prayer, you guys, to start this little journey of ours, wherever it's gonna have us go. Dear Lord, I thank you for another wonderful day. And I thank you, Lord, for just how incredible you are. 
Would you please be with me on this trip? Protect the animals on the road from my truck, the other truck drivers out there. Would you help me to escape any really terrible weather? Um, the only reason why I'm concerned about the weather is I just don't want to have to be tackling chains with the way the tendonitis is in my hand, Lord. I just pray that you please just help me to overcome any any really bad weather. Maybe it'll warm up a little bit while I'm driving through there and it'll, the roads will be good. And Lord, I just also pray that you help me to be the man that I want to be, a man after, God, after your heart, Lord, and a man that walks with you. And uh, I also ask that you bless and just care for the needs of every single person watching this video right now. The, the YouTubers out there that need you, Lord. The YouTubers that don't know you. Lord, I pray that you will bring someone to this channel who will hear from you or hear about you for the first time in a way that they've never heard before and that they will give their life to you, O Lord. This is what I pray. And would you please be with my family, <clears throat> my grandchildren, Autumn, Abby, uh, Jakai, my other grandson that's out there in Australia, Michael and Liam, and of course my kids, Jeremiah. Ariana and um, Lord would you give Chelsea a hug for me please I miss her very much and I'd love to see her can't wait to see her again and would you bless my entire family as well my sisters and my dear friends who I talk to every day they know who they are with your Lord I pray all of this in the precious name of Yeshua amen So let's see if he's watched me. Oh. I don't think so. Nope. Uh, I'm gonna wrap all these up. Where is he? Hey, Paul. You haven't washed, have you washed it out yet? You haven't, eh? You haven't washed it out yet, have you? No. Okay. I'm just pulling these straps out. There's about four of us that are going to deliver or do paperwork rather in the Gallus and then head over the border. And then uh, we're all gonna meet up somewhere. But my load is in the Gallus not Nogales, rather, uh, Hood River. And uh, I think Dale is going to Yakima. And I don't know where the other guys are going. Okay, we're all ready to go. Pre-trip, everything's done. I'm heading out now because my paperwork is done. No sense in sitting around. Yeah, Paul. This guy's a really nice guy. Always does such a good job on the trucks. 
pinning them and maintaining them. I don't think he works on the mechanical side of it, but he, I don't know if he does or not, but I know he does a pretty good job here. So, finally moving again. <laughs> Start to get a little cabin fever like when are we gonna get out of here but uh it, it all works you gotta work everything out and because of the holidays they got other crews coming back and yeah it uh it can be a little bit time consuming trying to get loads going what are you doing there bud so uh yeah heading to hood river um, I know, I, I got an idea, I know where I'm going, but I uh, haven't got that confirmed yet, but we're going to go to Hood River and load up with pears. And I don't mind that, because pears have a, they seem to be more of a commodity, or they seem to be more of a priority uh, when you go across the Mexican border. So, we'll see how that works out, but in the meantime, feels good to be rolling again. <laughs> sure does. in the snow. Just went over uh, Stevens Pass and now we're uh, down pretty well on the other side of it. But there seems to be a little bit of snow on the ground, not a big deal. And we're about 25 miles away from uh, truck stop I'll be stopping at. 
but uh, just coming down the other side, or going up and then coming down the pass, and my goodness, the roads are terrible. I mean, just big chunks of ice on the, on the, on the passenger side, and just really, really bad. I mean, they could use a grader up there. And uh, there's a lot of people up there too with their snowmobiles and their skis. Cars are fine, but the trucks, my gosh, it's just rattling, rattling me like crazy and to the point where the fridge is almost opening on me. <laughs> so, like I said, we don't have too much further to go here. But um, there was a little bit of black ice, so I just don't see any sense on driving stupid where you run into a little bit of that ice and all of a sudden you're in a snowbank because I don't have any weight on my drive so I'm very very light and uh, yeah I just feel like getting to the truck stop in one piece today that would be ideal that sure is pretty huh <laughs> it is nice to look at Good morning everyone, yeah we made it to monitor last night and we actually were able to park right here on site which is nice. The only negative thing is we got dumped on last night with snow. That's what the uh, asphalt looked like before I got here. I mean it was totally 100%, uh, the roads are all completely clear. Yeah I would say there's Oh, good four inches of snow here. So I'm just taking down the information on my license plate before that place opens up. Shipping office is just over there. So we have to have the reefer on 32 continuous, so I've set that up already, even though I'm probably not gonna load for at least another hour. But don't want it any colder in there. I think it's 32 or 30 right now.
night I just went over to the window to check in and uh, the place where I'm backed into is not the place where they load you but I didn't know that I figured it was because the shipping office is right there right so she told me it's right across the street over yonder door number two so door number two it is it's gonna go single, double, single, double. Yeah, it's only six bullets. That's right, because I got other ones, right? And I don't want the other guys to unload it, so can you do single, double, yeah. single, double? Yeah, I'm only getting six skids here. I guess these are pairs. And the other ones I'll be picking up are going to be apples. And that's the ones I'm picking up in Hood River. Get in there. This guy's nice enough to put the light on for me. Come on. Make our way to Hood River. <clears throat> I think we got a vehicle coming here. I can see that on my right. And I don't know if this is the town right here. Monitor is where we are. But if this is the ta town, this is pretty cute and tiny. You got people out with their snow blowers. Yeah, they got, <laughs> they got a lot of snow, huh? Oh yeah, it looks a whole lot different than it did last night when I came through here, I'll tell you. Little shop here, fire hall here, a little, uh, a little market here. You know, I swear I've been here before. Little post office right there. Oh, that little market looks really charming. But I should have went over there in the morning and got a coffee. I really don't need to do that because I already have coffee in the truck if I really needed that bad. Well, a few more bumps like that and it'll knock off every bit of snow off my truck. So hopefully the 97 is in good condition because that's the direction we're going. That would be ideal. That would be ideal. Well, this, this main road looks not bad. Hopefully people are patient for guys that are coming across like this. Come on, baby girl. Come on. Come on. Come on, sugar. All right. Let's go, go, go.
help you, sir? Yes, I'm picking up for Key West. Number? Uh, 1999-686. No, it'll just be the 1999. Okay. <laughs> Eight pallets for Mexico. Oh, is that all it is? Just eight? Eight pallets. Ah. If you're getting a Mexico load. Yeah, I am. Okay, yeah, 1999 is eight pallets, and I verified it this morning because we usually don't do partials, but she said yes. Who are you talking to? The salesperson. Oh. Sold the load. Okay. Do you want to make a phone call or something before we do all this? Yeah, or? I think I will. Okay, go ahead. I'm just going to double. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah. yeah, better check that. Nine pallets. That's not according to what what I was told. All right, there was a little bit of confusion. Somebody wasn't our company. Wasn't. These guys changed the order. It was supposed to be 14 pallets. They changed it to eight. So I got a hold of Key West and said, hey, uh, this is what they're doing. They went, no, 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 no. We're not going all the way that. The customer will not be happy if we go all the way that distance with 14 skids all together. So, uh, I gotta wait for one of those two guys to pull out and then I can take a door. Thank you, sir. All right, got my bill of sale, got my shipping papers, got my woof, woof, my Fido. <laughs> my weights worked out really well. Didn't take them long to load me. Now I'm being told, I'm being instructed by management to take the I-5 down because apparently there's Really gonna be some bad weather. And we're set. Hi there, I am Ray Gaucher, and welcome to this edition of Bible Break. And today we've got an amazing story of uh, two men that uh, were obviously different. One was a man of God, one was a man of power. Yes, we're talking about David and Goliath. We'll be reading out of 1 Samuel chapter 17. And if you aren't familiar with the story, it's just an amazing story on how amazing God can be there even for the smallest person. And if you're going through a trial right now, if you're going through a tough time and you feel like you're all by yourself, remember that God is with you as he will be with David in this true story. So let's open up with prayer, shall we? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to read your word. It's always a privilege and a blessing. I ask, Lord, that you open my mouth, my tongue, to speak the truth about this, and that I would convey to those listening the truth, and that you may send a message to those, and maybe even one individual that really needs to hear this. And dear Lord, I pray that everyone listening would hear it, every single word of it, and that you would bless everyone listening to this message right now. I pray in Yeshua's precious name. Amen. 
And if you are a Bible reader, who does not love this story? And if you are a new believer <clears throat> and you haven't had the, as I said, privilege of reading this, we're going to share it together right now. And we're going to pick it up in chapter 7, verse 2, because in verse 1, there's a lot of names I'm going to butcher. <laughs> to save myself some embarrassment, we'll pick it up in verse 2. And I am reading, just for those of you that might want to know, out of the Restoration Study Bible, 4th edition. It is based on the Old and New Testament of the King James Translation. Chapter 17, verse 2, And Saul, and Saul at that particular time, was the king of Israel. And the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah, and set the battle in array against the Philistines. So here is Israel. They are preparing for war with the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the side on one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. Now, six cubits and a span would say he was roughly nine and a half feet tall. That's a big boy. <laughs> That's very, very big. And he had a helmet of brass on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. Very heavy. Uh, you'd have to be nine and a half feet with muscles out to here to be able to even carry that around. And he had on greaves of brass on his legs, and a target of brass between his shoulders, and the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed six hundred shekels of iron, and one bearing his shield went before him. This guy was just armed. He not only had the strength and the height, but he had um, just a ridiculous amount of armor around him. This man was ready for battle. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are ye come out? to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine and ye servants to Saul? Choose a man for you and let him come down to me. So here's his challenge. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. So that's his challenge. If you kill me, we'll serve you. If we kill him, you serve us. And the Philistines and the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. This guy must have looked pretty scary. Nine and a half feet tall, all that armor. I don't know if there was too many men that were willing to challenge him, and obviously there wasn't at this particular moment. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now let's move over to verse 26. And David, who was at that time a shepherd taking care of his sheep in the, uh, in the meadow, spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the men that killeth this Philistine? and taketh away the reproach from Israel. For who, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living Elohim? I love David. He's, he's a youth, he's young, he's small. And he's like, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that, he may def that he's going to defy the God of Israel? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, so shall it be done to the men that killeth him. And Elab, his eldest brother, now this is funny, here's his brother rebuking David now, heard what he spake unto the men. And Elab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why camest thou down hither? Why even come down here? And with whom hast thou left the, left the few sheep in the wilderness? So he's saying, why did you even bother coming down here? And What would you do with the sheep? Like, who did you leave the few sheep that we have with? I know thy pride and the haughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. Doesn't sound like he thinks very highly of his, of his brother here. 
And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? And he turned from him toward another, and spake after the same matter. And the people answered him again after the former matter. Now when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. So they told Saul <coughs> uh, what David had said, and now here's Saul going, bring him to me. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail, because of him thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. So here's David saying, don't, don't let anybody be afraid, I will go take care of this. And Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he be a man of war from his youth. So Goliath is a man of war, and he has been ever since he's been young. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. So he's saying, look, I've been attacked by the most ferocious animals, and I went out after him, and smote him, and deliver <coughs> excuse me, delivered it out of his mouth. When he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. David's saying, well, look, I went after a lion, and I went after a bear, and I took care of them. I killed them. <coughs> he's probably saying, what's the difference between them and this man? Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living Elohim. David said, Moreover, Yahweh, that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and Yahweh be with you. So here's David saying, God will be with me through this ordeal. And I guess Saul couldn't really argue with him. Um, this young man's on fire. And um, with a man of that confidence and with the Lord by his side, what, what have they got to lose, right? What have they got to lose? Verse 38, and Saul armed David with his armor. So here's Saul putting his armor on David. And he put an helmet of brass upon his head. And he also armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go. So he's getting ready to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. So here's David saying, this doesn't fit me. It's too big. He's probably dragging his sword. Probably couldn't even lift the sword. Um, his armor is way too big. It must have been quite humorous for him to try to even move and leave with this stuff. And David put them off him. So he just took off everything that Saul put on him. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even in a script. And his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistines. So he took off all the armor. He equipped himself with a staff, five smooth stones, and his sling. Slingshot, sling, whatever you want to call it. And the Philistine came, came on and drew near unto David. And the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy of a fair countenance, just a scrawny little guy. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog, that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his mighty ones. What are you, you've come here with a stick? What am I, a dog? And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air, and to the beasts of the field. And then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of Yahweh of hosts, the Elohim of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. 
It really sounds like David's really upset and angry with, with Goliath because of what he's done against God. Not necessarily against God. Israel or the armies, but how he has come against God to try to make a fool out of his God. All right, verse 46. This day will Yahweh deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the hosts of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is and Elohim in Israel. Again, this is all about God in, in, in David's eyes. This is what's so amazing about this. And all of this assembly shall know that Yahweh saveth not with the sword and spear, for the battle is Yahweh's, and he will give you into our hands. Just so powerful, isn't it? And it reminds us that no matter how big we are, no matter how small we are, no matter how weak we are, if we have Yahweh by our side, we can accomplish anything. Especially when it comes to a battle against demonic presence, uh, against um, addictions that we have in our life, uh, just against really any battle that we're going through. Elohim, Yahweh will be there with you. Verse 48, And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David. And David haste and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. So here's David running towards him. Not just kind of walking. He's running after him. And David put his hand in his bag and took there a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine that the stone sunk into his forehead. Here's David, he's running with such force, he puts the stone in his sling and he just launches it at, at Goliath to the point where that stone actually embedded itself into Goliath's head. And he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore, David ran and stood upon the Philistine, and he took his sword and drew it out of the sheath. So he took Goliath's own sword and took it out and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. And this is where we end it right here. Just an amazing story when you think about it. Just the courage of David. And the reason why he had the courage that he did is because he walked with God. He was with God. I can just imagine what David was like when he was a youth. Here he is taking care of the sheep and he's fighting off these ferocious animals that are trying to kill the sheep. And that obviously prepared him for the battle with Goliath. And just think how embarrassing that must have been to the armies of Israel seeing this young man defeat this army simply by destroying their, or killing uh, their, their most ferocious um, soldier, Goliath, and they fled. They just like, <laughs> we're out of here. And it, it's just, I, I, I'm sure that must have been an amazing testimony for those that were there that seen it. And, and their, their faith in God probably just arose. And I can just imagine how pleased God was of David to not only show how powerful he is, not David, but God, in a situation like that, that he will be with you. He will stand by your side during the most ferocious battles, even the ones that seem absolutely impossible. Think about that. Here's a nine and a half foot man. He's full of armor. This guy's got a massive sword, I'm sure. Scared the entire army of Israel, including, uh, including their king. And here comes this young guy who is literally ready to fight this battle not with a massive army behind him but simply the word of god and it's just incredible it really is well my friends i hope you've enjoyed this amazing story out of first uh, samuel chapter 17 uh for those of you that are new this is not this is not uh this is not fiction it, it is a real thing it's a real story and it really did happen and i want you to know too uh, if you're going through a struggle if you're going through a very rough time as i said before 
God will be with you. My God was with David in this situation. Until next time, my dear friends, God bless you all in the name of Yeshua. Bye for now. traffic jam here because of an accident up ahead so we're just kind of crawling along here we're almost at the accident scene up here but that's not why I'm what I'm bringing to your attention look at all the flooding over here they're getting a lot of rain out here in California and they need it they're gonna get a lot of it the system that's coming over just look at that that looks like a lake that's not a lake that's a field that is a field and it looks like a lake. Incredible. Incredible. Maybe we'll get moving here a little bit. We've been crawling at this for the last 15 minutes here. But it looks like some people, looks like we're moving. So maybe we're gonna start getting up to speed again here. No, no, they're hitting the brakes up there. And of course they're gonna have the looky loos a little look. Um, it's not on that side, it's on the other side by the looks of it. 16 miles away from taking a break. <laughs> Gotta put fuel in. I'm gonna stop with the Flying J up here. I do believe it's in Lodi. I think. Yeah. That's where we're gonna go. But yeah, just a ridiculous amount. I don't know how much rain they're expecting here, but they're expecting a lot. So I'm hoping that the reservoirs will be able to fill up because they definitely do need it out here, as I was saying. some people not to be on the roads because the flooding is so bad and uh, look at let's look at the accidents it's it's total carnage around here because just because it is bad weather there's a lot of cars in ditches there's a lot of cars in um, in the medians smashed up against um, the guardrails because the people out here even though the weather is like this and they're thinking oh it's just rain they're not understanding what is going on up here oh I better get off this highway I better get off this road
everything's coming to a close up here. I gotta get off here. I got a feeling I'm gonna be stuck on the highway if I don't get off. No idea what this is gonna bring on. Okay, we're gonna have to take another route. Or maybe we can get on and off. Just the, the, the amount of rain that they're getting right now is just outrageous. Okay, there's police up there too. But I think they're getting through up here. Oh. Well, let's see if I can get back on over here. No, you know what? No. I'm not going to do that. This is ridiculous, man. I don't think I've ever seen this much rain out here. It is so bad that the trees, there's trees all along the, the, the highway there that are lit. Oh my, that is, look at the flooding down here. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have went through here. This is not good. <laughs> oh my gosh. There's trees all along the side of the interstate that are literally laying on their side just because of the amount of rain that's soaked the ground and the trees are just tipping over. Wow, this is not good. I may not even make it <clears throat> to where I wanted to get to. I've just never seen this kind of, I guess they're not used to this kind of stuff, right? This flooding. Uh, I wonder if there's another way I can get through here, but I don't know if it's going to get any better going through Stockton. I may be able to get through that. Just craziness. You got cars going over there. I don't know if I can get across there with my truck now. I should have stayed on the main road. <coughs> Not good not good this water is really 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 deep ridiculously deep I think I'll be okay with the truck and trailer but still look at this Total insanity. Just look at this flooding. I can't just park here. I gotta go. And I gotta wait until that light changes. <laughs> Listen, this nuts. Have you ever seen anything like this? Out here in California. I gotta go through, I don't have a choice, I can't park there. No, oh, we made it through. I'll tell you one thing, we're getting a real good washing on the truck.
Good morning, my friends. I am leaving Lebec, the pilot flying J on the top of the hill, just on the top of the grapevine. And we're heading out of here. It looks like the storm has passed. Even though if you look up on those hills up there, it's snowing up there. But that's nothing unusual. <clears throat> we are at 3,800 feet and we still have to climb more. But uh, at least we made it here last night. My gosh, what a day yesterday. I've never seen rain like that ever in California. I don't think anybody's ever seen rain. But you know what? I was talking to one of the girls. Look at the clouds still over there. That system is still moving that way. It's still moving towards Vegas. Anyway, I was talking to one of the girls in the Flying J here. And uh, she said that, I said, just crazy. We're talking about the rain. She goes, yeah, but it's done wonders for the forest fires. And I went, oh, you guys still had forest fires going? And she said, yeah, really bad ones. And now they're all out. <laughs> and I'm like, praise God, right on. <clears throat> That's great news. So, uh, yeah, something good came out of all of it. Okay, I don't know what you're doing there, buddy. He's sitting at the stop sign. He's obviously on his phone. Is it really that difficult to put that phone down while you're driving? I don't know. Look at the mud that came over here, here. Here, here? <laughs> yeah, anyway. Ah. So now we get to climb this hill. We'll crawl up this hill, literally. And uh, at the rate I'm going, we should be in Rio Rico by 8 p.m. tonight by the looks of it. <clears throat> or should I say the destination where I'm going? I didn't expect to be there by 8 p.m. because it's 8.11 right now. So why it's telling me I'm gonna be there at 8. Technically, I should be there by 7. Look at this, I'm just struggling to get up this hill. I would do anything for another 50 horsepower <laughs> or at least hook a lawnmower up to the engine help me <laughs> well i got a feeling we'll be there a little sooner if we're not i mean this is going to eat a lot of my time crawling this hill here see look at over there up top there isn't that nice a little bit of snow on the top of the hill there yeah i will uh I will bet dollars to donuts that there won't be any parking where I'm going to be going, but I'll find something. I'll find something. Anyway, another day, another adventure. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you for getting me here safely yesterday through that monsoon of weather. And I ask you to be with me today. In Yeshua's name, I pray. Amen. I'm in Ehrenberg. I think that's how you say it. In Arizona at the pilot with a flying J. Got my fuel and can't start my truck. Sounds like the starter. <sighs> yep. 
Yeah, this is a little frustrating. I think every every two weeks or every week I'm broken down or something's wrong with this truck. This truck is just torturing my brain. <sighs> so now I'm literally in a fueling lane. I was up there, but um, and there was a guy behind me. <laughs> and now um, I can't even move. I can't start this thing. If I can just get it going, I can just don't turn it off, right? Until we get home or to a repair place. If I could just get this thing started, let's see if it works. Dear Lord, <laughs> could you please help me start the truck? I would really love to be able to get to my destination today. And um, I'm just, I'd be so grateful, Lord. Please, could you let me please help start this truck? <laughs> Can you believe this? I can't believe this. Anyway, so now I've got management or the person on call. I think it's Jerry on call over at uh, Key West. He's uh, trying to get a hold of a towing company that may be able to come over and put some power cables actually to the um, the starter and maybe if we can do that maybe we can get the starter to turn over this is just ridiculous <laughs> Jeez. oh my gosh all right we got these little birds here and they are adorable look at them just sitting on my hood there they want a piece of my donut so let's see if they're actually going to come and take it out of my hand Look at this, he's gonna to try to get it on my hand. Look at this. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, he got it, he, he landed right on my, my hand. Come on. Holy cow, these birds are so brave. I thought the ravens were brave. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, they're so beautiful. Oh, this is so adorable. These birds are so beautiful. There we go. This one's got, he got it right out of my hand. Good for you. <laughs> I am the bird man. Yeah, that's pretty cute, huh? Well, we got one mechanic here. He's uh, waiting for his buddy to show up and hopefully they can get this thing started. In the meantime, I've had the privilege and pleasure of feeding these birds. Can't believe it pulling the food right out of my hand. Isn't that sweet? How you doing? So you don't get anything inside? No power? Oh, I got lots of power. Oh, I yeah. just can't start it because the solenoid's not making any connection with the starter. We were told dead batteries. That's what no, no. Oh, okay. Dead batteries. No, but when I try to start it, just It's just, tick, 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 tick. it's just, I need something to get some power to the starter. Yeah. Wow, look at that black cloud up there, huh? Oh, I know, it's coming. I was telling my son, I was like, man, hopefully we can get it done before those clouds get here. I just got out of California, that big storm that hit. Uh -huh. Everything was flooded. Yeah, it's horrible. It, I went oh, through that. Like All right. Hold on here. It's not letting the power go through. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't know if you guys heard the conversation I was having with the guy. They may have to tow me all the way to Phoenix. Um, I'm trying to figure out how far that's going to be from here. Well, it's still two hours and 39 minutes away. <laughs> oh, wow. Unbelievable. Well, the rain is starting to come down now. And we're just waiting to hear from them and they're gonna let me know what our company wants to do. And they do have a heavy wrecker. Or they're gonna get another heavy wrecker to do it. But I just don't know. I don't know what to do with this. Just a bad day here. Okay, friends, so here's the deal. Um, apparently, there's a shop right here, which I did see, and I did call them and ask them if they can fix this. And the guy says, no, we, can, we don't really fix 
starters on diesel in or Detroit engines. And I'm like, oh, great. So that's one of the reasons why we called AZ. So now we find out that they can change it, but they won't be able to obviously look at it until tomorrow. So they're gonna, <laughs> this is really ridiculous. I could just start this thing. They're gonna get their big rig, tow truck, their heavy wrecker, and they're gonna hook up to me, probably drop the axles just to drive over there <laughs> and put, put me in the back, in behind. Can you believe that? If I can just get this thing to start. Oh man. Fortunately, <laughs> fortunately, I can plug into the reefer like I was telling you and power my truck tonight so I don't have to worry about any, um, you know, anything in my truck like my freezer, my cooler shutting off. But, um, they may end up having someone else come and get this load. I, I don't know. Um, we'll have to see what they're going to do. I'm going to phone them and ask them what they're going to do, but uh, you know, we'll go from there. Good morning. If you can hear it, the truck is running. It never fails, huh? You have to get towed out of a out of a fueling lane 400 feet over just for your truck to start up in the morning. <laughs> yeah, it's running now. It fired up. So uh I guess the whole trick here is whenever I stop, just idle it up and don't let it shut down until I get back. And then they can check everything that they want to check in the shop when we get back. But still, oh my gosh, <laughs> what a pain. But look at this day. 
I don't mind, you know, getting, when you break down in, in Arizona, it's a good thing because you just can't beat this weather. It's just absolutely gorgeous out here. <clears throat> Birds are singing and uh, yeah, so we got five hours and 40 minutes still to make our way to Nogales. We may not make it to the border today. We should be able to make it to inspection though. And then if I have to, I'll park it on the uh, American side. And then once the border opens up, I'll, I'll head over in the morning and do my delivery. Well, good morning friends it is uh, yeah I think just after 930 or something like that oh 951 and uh, I'm out here in Rio Rico I made it out here last night and uh, we're back with the same problem again truck won't start uh, I thought maybe some water or something got in the alternator or whatever. I, it could be the solenoid that's, that's got the problem. I, I don't think this, the starter sees that for anything. I think it's the solenoid. Click, 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 click. <sighs> so we are waiting here at this pilot for a repair guy to show up again. I just want to get this load delivered. <laughs> Regardless, uh, it has to be delivered today. So um, uh, the mechanic was just here. He said he would be back. He'll find some way to get a truck to pull me out of here and at least release me from the trailer and then maybe back the trailer or truck over here and then he can do whatever work on it he needs to do. And then uh, maybe he can get it fired up. Maybe he can get it started right away. I don't know what, he, what magic tricks he's got up his sleeve. But um, I'll be very, very happy when this day is over and, the, and this load has been delivered. Because this this has been a really really fascinating trip hasn't it crazy weather breakdowns <laughs> just insane but anyway friends that's all I have for you I'm gonna wrap things up here because this could just go on and on and on and on with breakdowns and everything else um, I know maybe some of you might have wanted to see what was going on across the border I don't know how long it's gonna take to do all this um, but um, yeah, we're going to wrap things up here. So Happy New Year to everybody. And if you like the video, please like it and share it. And um, do feel free to comment on the bottom. I do read all the comments. I don't respond to them because there's a lot of comments to respond to. And I just don't have all that time to do that. So I want you to know that when you, when you do leave a comment, I do read them. I just don't respond to them. And if you want to send me a personal email, prayer request, or, you know, whatever, 
send it to truckerray7 at gmail.com. Truckerray7 at gmail.com. All right, friends. Until next time, God bless you all in the name of Yeshua. Again, Happy New Year.